For the past two years, on and off, I've been living with this family of shamans uh, based in Peru. They are from a tribe of people called the Shipibo people who are sort of the guardians of ayahuasca. They have a long tradition working with the plants in the jungle. Um, their artwork, their traditions, their beliefs are very influenced by the ayahuasca experience, the ayahuasca medicine, which they call uni. And uni is the combination typically of two plants of the ayahuasca vine ayahuasca. and the chacuna leaf. And the chacuna leaf has DMT in it and the vine has a enzyme which allows you to be able to ingest the DMT. So it's sort of this ingenious combination of plants which is um, you know very interesting that they were able to find the perfect combination of plants and the whole array of species that is found in the Amazon jungle and um, manifest this experience. When you asked the Shibibo shamans how they discovered this, this, uh, this combination of plants, they just say the plants, the plants told us. They all say this. This is their, this is what, you know, all of them believe is that the plants revealed to them the secrets. They, they revealed to them secrets in general, not just with ayahuasca. Um, I had a shaman tell me once that um, ayahuasca was revealed through tobacco. And it, I find it interesting that they actually, the Shibibos, put tobacco actually higher than ayahuasca. All around the Americas, you find tobacco being regarded as a divine plant or as a, a master plant. They actually call it the master plant of the master plants, the Shibibos do. So, something I didn't really understand before uh, really getting to live with this family and getting to do their ceremonies with them and just really see sort of the way, the everyday way that they interact with the world. I was actually um, living at Arcana Spiritual Center in the Sacred Valley of Peru with Eligio, who is uh, a shaman and the son of Maestra Justina. Justina is sort of the the head shaman of this family. You know, she uh, she she was born in the rural jungle. Maestra Justina became a shaman in her 20s. She started working with ayahuasca at this time, and she did a two-year dieta which we're going to talk about uh, what a dieta is a diet and the importance of it in the shibibo shamanism so maestro justina had to do this dieta with a plant called camelonga and um, she's done many dietas and she actually says that doing short dietas doing short dietas creates brujos which means it creates like bad shamans shamans that are uh, craving power and and these sort of things not uh, to heal people or to cure people so she does these long dietas these long diets in isolation in the jungle with uh, her and another shaman a teacher that is uh, initiating the dieta for her and you're not using any soaps you're not using any salt oil you're eating probably once a day just very simple meals a fish, maybe a plantain, um, no spices. It's very strict and you're not talking to people besides your teacher. And um, something that they, the shamans reveal or that they talk about while they do these dietas and that other people have reported back outside of the Shibibos is that when you do these diets long enough, something interesting starts to happen. You may have heard people talk about ayahuasca or mushrooms invoking a sort of intelligence, coming in contact with entities, uh, people, some people call them aliens, spirits, spirit guides, ancestors, ghosts. Um, there's many different machine elves, you know, there's many different ways that people have interpreted 
these intelligences that, that, that are hiding in the plants. So unlike ayahuasca, some of these other plants are not as loud. They're a little bit more shy. So you do these long dietas with these quieter plants and they start to speak. They start to speak, just like ayahuasca starts to speak, the intelligence begins, begins to be revealed to you. And just like ayahuasca or mushrooms or iboga all have their different personalities, these different plants also have these different personalities. And they give you powers, basically. They teach you sacred vibrations. They teach you physical energy healing, energy work. And um, it's all, the way I imagine it, in a way, is that you're befriending the plants and you use what it shows to you, use what it reveals to you, the songs, the symbols, uh, the spiritual psychic uh, downloads that it gives you. You call upon these in ceremony as an ally to help you heal people and to fight off the energies that you might come in contact with during ceremony, which you will come in contact with during ceremony. And um, you can see it. You can see the shamans during ceremony take on the energy that people are purging out. In ayahuasca, one of the most important parts of the ceremony is, is the purge, uh, la purga. And this is to cleanse your body. Ayahuasca has this um, mechanism of making you puke. <laughs> So, or, or, you know, coming out the other end. It's coming out in some way. There, there's many forms of purges. Sometimes it comes in energy. Sometimes it comes in yawning and stretching. Sometimes it comes in the form of puke. Or, again, that, poop. Or um, in many ways, laughs, screams. There are these releases that are being uh, held in our bodies in daily life that happen when we take ayahuasca. So you see the shaman taking on these people's energies during the ceremony and they're transmuting it into, uh, into light. You know, it sounds ridiculous to people that grew up here in the U.S. and we have no connection to what it means to live in the jungle and actually be connected to nature. Some people say that Shipibo is actually is the language of the plants and that these people grew up dieting the plants you know when you go to the jungle and you're in these communities they say the pharmacy this is our pharmacy the, 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 the jungle is our pharmacy when we get sick we don't go to the doctors or to uh, you know like the CVS we go to the curanderos the curanderas and we go to the jungle and we heal ourselves this way. So for a people that have been in the trees, have been in the plants for thousands of years, their language was developed while ingesting these plants. Some say that just in the same way that these songs are revealed, these ikaros, these sacred mantras are revealed through, to the plants, from the plants to the person dieting the plants, also the language itself, Shibibo language, was is the language of the plants. So an Ikaro is something that is also revealed. An Ikaro is what is basically their mantra or their holy songs that they sing to the plants that they have dieted. And it's not actually just plants you can diet, but traditionally you diet you are dieting plants to gain these to gain this wisdom. So an Ikaro the sacred songs are ways of calling the allied spirits that you have made friends with in the plant world. So, uh, for example, there are these chaikuni spirits, these protectors of the, the jungle. They're called chaikunis. And there's a plant called chaikuni. If you diet this chaikuni plant, these guardians of the trees, these genies of the jungle will reveal themselves to you and offer their allyship to you, their friendship to you. And uh, they come as beings of light, as of, of spirits. They're humanoid looking spirits. They, um, many people talk about seeing them, but if you specifically diet Chaikuni, 
then during your ayahuasca ceremonies or just in life you will see these beings this is what um, the shamans report and what other people report I've never personally died at a plant I've done many ayahuasca ceremonies so I know I know of the worlds that they are speaking of and I know of the spirits that exist in these these worlds so I see from my own experience how it's possible or how that you can have these experiences um, it's very fascinating to me and it's actually one of the deepest forms of shamanism I've I've found in all of my uh, my research and shaman and meeting shamans uh, the Shabibos are really are really onto something the different plants that you diet will give you different results this is very interesting actually because this um, what they're saying is that nature is alive and that you can communicate with your surroundings through um, through ingesting them that there is some kind of spiritual some kind of spiritual root system that stays within you like if you think about the mycelial mycelial network or that the way that trees are connected underground you know you hear that maybe a tree over here will be wounded and all the trees in the area are sending it the nutrients to heal itself so in a way there's this sort of spiritual system that works the same way that when you ingest these certain plants long enough and with the intention of um, building an allyship it, it happens there is a symbiotic connection that reveals itself inside of you and it's just always there you know my friend blue she she did um, a dieta with Bobinsana and uh, she calls on it during ceremony I'll hear I, I'll hear her when we do ceremony together calling on it and uh, in just in life I hear her calling on it you know when she's about to give a talk to a big group of people or something she she calls on her allied friend that she made in the plant world and um, she's not a Shabibo shaman she's just um, a person that got introduced to this tradition and found that it actually is real so this means what this means is that nature is intelligent it's alive it's communicating with us and we have no relationship to that in our traditions where is where is the relationship so if nature is intelligent in the same way that human beings are birthed with a certain level of intelligence and we are nature so is it possible that other entities especially the older entities like some of these plants that have been here for you know that have watched civilizations come and go and have remained who they are this plant queendom is is um, will be here long after human humans are gone and we're, we're here before humans arrived so is it possible that the intelligence we have is also expressed in other forms and that these other forms are able to meet yeah it is possible because I've experienced it if you uh, dive into the world of Shipibo shamanism you can also experience it and um, it works. That's the thing about um, the difference between shamanism and the difference between uh, like organized traditional religions that most of us watching this video were brought up with is that uh, to sort of be Christian or Hindu or Muslim or any of these things there's there's um, a level of belief that is required a, f a level of faith a leap of faith that you need to uh, to be a proper Christian to be a proper anything maybe not Hindu so much because Hinduism is also another shamanic religion but the difference between say Christianity and should people shamanism is that the Shipibo shamanism works for there's no there's no belief required you you do a month of ayahuasca two months of ayahuasca 
ceremonies traditionally with these masters that have grown up in the traditions and grown up in the culture that is completely and utterly based around this experience then um, it works it, uh, it works absolutely and utterly it doesn't I've I worked for this arcana spiritual center for for months and I watched people from all over the world come and it works there's no question in my mind and there's no question in my mind that um, that uh, <clears throat> yeah I don't know I don't know it's the belief belief is um, it goes out the window the experience when you're having the experience it's just like it's as solid as this you're like oh my god like it almost feels more real than this experience here when you're in there you feel like oh there's a part of me that's here more than like the, the than the normal world and I guess what I mean by that is like you know when you're in the dream world it feels this is my world this is my life I am whoever I am in this dream world and this crazy thing I'm seeing is reality and then when we're here we feel the same way no I am Dakota I am this person I do these things these are my memories and then when you're in the ayahuasca realm the psychedelic space the spirit world it's the same you say oh my god this is this is actually more real than the temporariness of my other experiences this seems to be an underlying baseline where my normal life is coming out of like a different dimension a higher dimension um, so I do believe that this tribe of people you want to call them that the Shipibo people are in contact with the plants they are in contact they, they if they have methods and tools just like we do to measure reality to interact with reality they have these plant teachers these spirits that exist in in a space that's like beyond our normal perception and um, yeah nature is there's there there is an intelligence there that is communicating with these people and giving them spiritual wisdom and giving them ways to heal people giving revealing the same sort of things that uh, was revealed to the yogis in the Vedas we sort of view Hinduism as being the the pinnacle of of spirituality you know what do we think of when we think of like the ultimate spiritual person we think of like the like a Buddha or a guy in a robe that's sitting somewhere quietly in nature and, uh, namaste and these sort of things are you know you I've been all over the world people there's yoga studios that are teaching the Vedas in every place in the world so um, which to me the Shabibos are up to par with the Hindus there's they are teaching a form of yoga actually in the Yoga Sutras by Patanjali which is arguably the greatest and most important text in yoga the father of yoga himself Patanjali wrote that the different ways to gain Siddhis or superpowers supernatural psychic abilities or sort of deeper understandings of reality ultimately are through austerities through um, deep contemplation through repetition of sacred noises mantras songs um, through and through plants through holy light filled herbs through the sacred divine plants this is a bona fide path to psychic re revelation to realization self inquiry um, Patanjali said this himself you can look at the Yoga Sutras uh, 4 chapter 4 verse 1 it's right there it says it in perfect in perfect Sanskrit um, so this is interesting this is interesting and uh, to me these people have figured that bit of yoga out through themselves and also the austerities which is going in the isolation only being with your teacher dieting the plant it's uh, the mantras 
that are revealed, the sacred songs, the Icaros, that are revealed from the spirit allies that are in the plants. And um, yeah, all of these things are encompassed in their traditions. And uh, you know, Shiva, interesting, um, interestingly enough, has a Datura flower that grows from his chest. I have a Datura flower here, tattooed on my arm uh, because of it. I got Shiva here, and I've got Shiva's Tilak here, and the Datura flower growing out of it. And um, also, sometimes in ayahuasca, they use Toe, which is the family of Datura, in their ayahuasca. So there's lots of interesting correlations between the two. But what I'm trying to say is that um, the Shibibo shamanic path is like a justifiable form of yoga. It is a, this is why I said earlier that Hinduism is actually a yogic tradition or a, a shamanic tradition. Um, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. These uh, people are in, are communicating with the plants. And you know, you hear people say, if you talk to your plants, that they grow better in whether or not that's because you're releasing carbon monoxide or whatever. But at the end of the day, what we breathe in, the trees release. What we release, the trees breathe in. We are inherently connected to nature. There's no separating us from the earth that we are connected to, this plants, the plant. We are an extension of the plants. The plants are an extension of us. There is this implication in our relationship where we need each other. Um, especially plants that, that we cultivate, you know, they can't exist without us. Weed, for example, uh, corn, for example. There are these plants that um, are literal extensions, extensions of us, and they, you know, they might go extinct. Oh, there's the five over right there. The boys are in the neighborhood. Shh, gotta stop talking about ayahuasca. So, what I'm trying to say is that we are in a relationship with nature, no matter what. We are, we are in constant communication with nature, even if we aren't linguistically doing it. Um, even when you're just sitting in silence and meditation, focusing on your breath, that breath is the language we use to communicate with the plants. So, yeah, anyways, um, this, yeah, I just wanted to make this video praising the beauty of the indigenous wisdom of the Shinibo, the Shibibo Konibo people of the Amazon jungle. Um, it has been a true blessing that I've got to live with these people, Maestro Justina and her family, and to get to experience their traditions firsthand, to get to experience something not many people get to experience. You know, it's only it's only really this this generation, or you know, maybe the generation of the beatniks where it started. But it's not been very long that we've had the opportunity to. Um, have their knowledge exchanged with us. So with my uh, Shibibo shirt on here, this is made by the community in, in, in uh, Peru. This is a shirt I wore in many ceremonies. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an honor. It is very much a deep honor to, uh, to um, experience their wisdom their truth, it, not even the, just their truth, a fundamental truth and human practice that we can use to better ourselves, heal ourselves. You know, I asked Ayahuasca once, I said, Ayahuasca, great genie of the jungle, what is this? Why do you heal us when we come to you? And she said, because you come to me and because your healing is my healing. Because when humans heal, the earth heals. When humans are in pain and when they're lost and hurting the whole planet feels it there's a reverberation of pain being echoed out into the plant world even into the animal world into the earth when humans are in pain so uh, my healing me healing you is me healing myself ayahuasca told me so with that 
you know, your healing is also my healing. So if we can, you know, take some of this power back, some are about reclaim our self-realization that we are nature. This is our earth. This is our home. This is us. Then, you know, it's a, it's a big revolution. So, anyways, my name's Dakota. Thank you for watching this video about shit people shamanism. I have very... I have a lot of videos. Um, you can see me living with the shamans. You can hear more stories about me living with the shamans on my podcast, A Place for Humans, or just through watching the videos here on YouTube, Dakota of Earth. You can follow me on Instagram, Dakota Wint. All the the stuff will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Peace and love. All right, so. So you can see why this is, it can be dangerous, no? Any tourist can come and buy their ayahuasca and think that, you know, people tell them, oh, you, you can cook it this way, this is a recipe, they'll have them cook it at home and you open doors that are very dangerous, no? And you need to be able to oh, yeah. come out of there, no? But, um, so this is the ayahuasca trade here in Iquitos.